Welcome to our podcast, Doing It Right. This podcast reveals authentic stories from successful leaders doing it right. It's about their journey to become a leader, their choices, motivations, and lessons. In essence, how they built successful personal brands. Your host is Valerie Sokolowski, author of eight leadership books and nationally known as an authority on executive presence and personal branding. Let's get started. Here's Valerie. Well, hello again and welcome to the show. And right up front, I want to thank Betty Ryder Boutique at Preston Center at the Plaza, The Red Door, for my lovely outfit today. I always am so pleased when I can wear something beautiful from her. For those of you who are new to the show, let me just tell you a little bit about how this all happened. I've had a leadership firm for 25 years and I've enjoyed so much igniting the spark of enthusiasm in those leaders who want to develop their personal brand and learn more about their presence. And so that's been my passion. And so for emerging leaders, I very much care about them leading authentically. That's why we started this show. My guests are always leaders who are staying authentic and living their values. And today is no exception. Just watch this clip of my wonderful guest for today. I wrote my first book when I was pregnant with my daughter, Hannah, which is just about 30 years ago now. And um, I wrote a poem to her, um, really welcoming her to the planet and what my wishes and my hopes and my dreams were um, as a mom and for my, my daughter yet to be born. And many years later, um, that poem was created into a book that was published and is still in publication today. So today I have a wonderful guest who wrote many, 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 many books, many children's books, mostly children's books. She sent me this one. Sandra, I want to welcome you to the show. I want to hold up this beautiful book and your philosophy that you shared with me prior to the show is to live artfully. And you sent this book to me of all the, how many books have you written now? Uh, 60 or 70, uh, quite a lot. Can I just say that again? 60 <laughs> or 70, which makes my eight look really small. And I don't think I have another book in me. But you sent me this one and tell us why this was the book you sent to me. Well, uh, out of all the books that I've written, I think this book it talks to the heart of what I really believe in and I want all children to know about themselves and I want all people to know. And that is that they are unique and we need everyone to be themselves. You know, in a world where you can be anything, I say be yourself and being you really matters. If each one of us is authentically and uniquely ourselves, bringing our gifts, the, the gifts that we can only bring to this planet, the world becomes a better place. So this book celebrates, encourages, and reminds us to be ourselves because it's the best thing we can be. And, and I think that's a really important message for children and for everyone to really own that and celebrate it. And it is in our differences that make us so special and to celebrate those as well. Well, it's, it's a great book and I had I had joy and smiles as I kind of flipped through it. Sandra, we're just going to talk woman to woman and women to women. This is pretty much all about women today. And you have a lot of messages. And your main message, your philosophy of living artfully started in your childhood. I want you to share with us how that all began as a twin. Yeah. Well, you know, I think the idea of being an individual, being yourself, um, a, a lot of those um, philosophies and ideas come out of being a twin, which is really a blessing. I love being a twin. I love having a relationship with another human being that's so close and that's so meaningful and filled with love. It's it's a gift. I, I really wish it for everyone. Um but in our relationship, I was more um, of, a, of a maker and a doer in terms of expression. And my sister was much more um, verbal. So I grew up making things, really. My grandmother and my mother were makers as well. 
And I learned to knit as a very young age and embroider and, you know, all those sorts of things, pottery. Um, and when I was about 12 years old, I had a very bad accident um, on a farm. My parents had a farm. I was um, trapped underneath of a piece of farm equipment and it couldn't be lifted. Um, men came to try to lift it. My dad, everybody, it was too heavy. And my sister, Susan, who was sitting off to the side, I called for her to help me and she came and effortlessly lifted this huge piece of equipment off my legs. Um, and I was you know, able to go to the hospital. I had a terrible um, break of my leg and I spent almost a year on a home and hospital school where I had to learn to use language. And um, I had headphones and I spoke, you know, on the phone to other students and teachers and the students were there because they too had accidents or they had cancer. And within that year, I really learned um, the most powerful lessons of my life. And it really was that um, love is the most powerful thing in the universe. It can do anything. It can lift tractors off of legs. You know, it can solve all sorts of problems and connect us. Um, and that we aren't promised tomorrow because many of those children who became my friends passed away that year. And um, I learned to live in the moment and to communicate what I felt in that moment. And that year I was at home, all my sisters, I'm one of five girls, they all went to school. And my grandmother and my mom decided they would go to the Woolworths, you know, the five and dime and get me these little embroidery kits that would say, have a beautiful day or a smiley face or flowers. And I really learned to embroider with messages and I would send them back to school to my friends through my sisters. And that really began this idea of creating something from my hands that could be given to another to share what was in my heart. And so I called them messages from the heart as I grew up become an artist and a young woman. And that time in my life really informed the rest of my life. Um, I became an artist where my work was incorporating words and imagery. And then I began, um, and then I, I went to therapy, to school, and became a therapist as an art therapist to help others use art as a way to communicate and express what was in their heart. Because I knew, my whole life, I knew that that words just weren't my only way i needed other ways to connect and communicate and i know other people are the same way we're not we don't all communicate in the same way and at the end of the day our ability to communicate as fully as possible and to connect with other human beings as fully as possible is what really allows us to be happy and connected and content um, on this planet and to have real love and real relationships I mean, authentic relationships is as authentic as we can express ourselves to others. So I was a therapist and I worked as a therapist for many years and I began creating these little message plaques with messages that I wanted to share, but also the messages that my patients were telling me that they wanted to share, that they couldn't quite find a way to do it, to say what was in their heart, whether it was, I'm sorry, I love you, um, you, know, you mean the world to me, whatever it was. I started engraving them in clay and I beaded the little handles and I filled my daughter's nursery with these messages that I wanted to say to her. And um, before she was born, the nursery was filled with them. And then she came in the world in a room filled with the messages that I most wanted to share with her. And my sisters came in and my friends and they were like, I want that one to say to this person. And I want that one for this person. So my sisters stole some of them. Other people I made more. But before I knew it, I had a business of making messages from the heart. And people would say, could you write this? Because um, my grandmother used to say it to me and I want to say it to my daughter. Could you write this on a plaque? And so I created this pottery company that just grew and grew. And before I knew it, I was you know, working 24 hours um, making pottery. I put a little kiln in our basement where our, our dryer was because it had the right kind of plug. And I unplugged the dryer and plugged the kiln in, and I, this business emerged. And that's almost 35 years ago. And from there, my business grew. Um, I started doing craft shows and then wholesale shows, selling to galleries and department stores and so on. And then um, at, at the New York gift show, um, companies started to come to me and say, we'd like you to design for our company, um, publishing companies. Would you, I would like, I think there's a book in this idea. And I had this poem that I wrote for my daughter before she was born um, that became the book, Welcome Little One. And that really 
was the beginning of my publishing career where I knew that of all the lessons that I had learned for myself, of all the lessons that I, I felt were important to share in the, in the universe, that publishing would be the way for me to do it through my poetry and combining my poetry with imagery. And so that's what I really have developed over these years. And that's what I do today. Um, and I love it. And it's, it feels like my life's purpose, you know, that I don't know what else to do. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, Sandra, what's so fascinating about this to me is you have all of these products and all of these beautiful messages. You mentioned pottery. You mentioned your children's books. Uh, people can go on your website and see the blankets and all of the other vehicles onto which you have put the messages of living authentically, living artfully. But I know of you, and this is what I want to say to the audience, as a mom and as a grandmother, those books, as you said, you've been doing this for a while, those books that were huggable and soft, do you have anything there that we can take a look at? And if, I hope, and yeah. if, yeah, I do, do you? Okay, I want you um, to hold this up because I bought those. I bought those, and now I'm interviewing you, and I've used your huggables with babies for years, and I'll bet some of the audience has too. Can you show some of well, those? Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. That's, it's amazing how I feel like I've, I've met so many people and connected through this work that has gone out in, in a way like an ambassador, you know, like kind of connecting me to people all over the planet. Um, what I want to say I think is so important is that the message is the same. It's about love. It's about compassion. It's about friendship. It's about connecting. It's about gratitude. But the messenger is what I think that I'm so interested in. I mean, whether it's designing for 1-800-Flowers where that message goes out with flowers or whether it's a book where it goes to a child or whether it's a piece of jewelry or a blanket, you know, or greeting cards. The messenger is just the format to deliver the message which to me is the heart of the whole story. That's how we connect and that's how we say what we most want to say with the people we love. Um, so the, for books, you know, we think of a book being, you know, pages, paper and, and a book and a cover. I want to expand that format because I think books can almost be a toy. They can be a message. They can be interactive and children really require that kind of interaction like me where I couldn't just use words alone. Other people are like that. Children are like that. They need something soft or cuddly. So I'm always inventing formats. Um, this is a really fun idea. And, and what this is, is an all fabric book. But the way you buy it is in like a Joann's or a fabric store as yards of fabric. And grandmas and moms and aunts sew these books, which I think is really cool. Um, and that's really fun. So we give people a way to make something that they want to say. With Scholastic, who's one of my publishers, this was a book, and I wanted to combine the idea of a plush animal, which children love to hold on to. They're called transitional objects in uh, psychology. Um, but we know children need something soft and lovely and combine that with a book story. So these little ears, this format I call irresistible, um, play, play on word intended, um, have ears all the way through them. And so the child can read about the bunny and the bunny tells a story of love and connecting and commitment and, and caring. And then they can hold the little ears, you know, and, and, and as they go to sleep at night. And there's all sorts of little ear books. This is one of their new ones called I Love You Little Monster. And our little monster has horns. <laughs> so that's really the, uh, the fun part. But then, you know, we also do books that are just a board book which is also lovely because this message is so sweet um, and it's for, it's a love letter to a baby. So we did it in the way that a letter would be read, you know, with words on paper. You are one creative lady. I'm going to ask you a question. You talked about nature and beauty and love. If you were a tree, what would you be? I'd have to pick one tree. If, oh. you, if you were a tree, what would you be? That's an alliteration, isn't it? <sighs> A willow is what I'd be. And why? I love a willow. I think a willow would be lovely. Yeah, I, I, I think a willow. Yeah. 
I think that's perfect because you're very graceful. <laughs> Let's get back to the women issue. Women today are um, in, in so many different roles. When I'm doing speaking engagements for women, I will take a moment and I'll say, I want you to take a pen and paper and write down how many hats you wear. Homemaker, wife, career, per, you know, uh, counselor, and on and on. And then they go from there and it's amazing what happens. We are in a different space as women. We're doing so many different things. If there's a message about your messages in living artfully, what would you say to us? Well, I think it's very true. Women are doing many, many things. And I think they're doing many things that we have kind of grown into and are now able to do, whether that's in the government, whether that's in business, whether that's in schools, whether that's in home. I mean, we now have, I think, a, the world of possibility. We can be and do anything we really want to do. And I think that's where the message lies. I would counsel any woman and say to any woman, do what you want to do. Make those decisions and put your energy into the activities, the jobs, the relationships that you believe in and that you care about. Um, I think, you know, we can make those choices. We can say, no, that's not right for me if it's not right for you. You can start something, you can get involved in something, and if it doesn't feel right and if it isn't fulfilling and you feel like you can't bring your best self to it, you can walk back from that. So I, I counsel women to really live artfully and make each thing they do purposeful, meaningful, do it with your whole heart and create something out of it. And, and if it doesn't feel right to you, I say, don't do it. That, thank you for that. And, and that was one of the lessons learned that you shared. You said, you'll make time for what you think matters and always and obviously do what is you. I think, Sandra, that's a difficult thing for so many of us women, meaning we can be very self-deprecating. We can say, I'm sorry, too much. Yeah. We can overcare, overcommit. We're sort of the over generation and gender, don't you think? I do. I do. I read um, this one email a, a while ago where someone wrote, and I wish I knew who wrote this because I thought it was a really good observation. They said when you're writing an email to someone and you're, you want to ask a question or you, you misunderstood something or something isn't quite right, women often say, I just want to ask as if they're apologizing for their question. And and, and this email, this 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 story, or where, however, I don't remember exactly how it came to me. It said, "Try writing it without apologizing for asking the question. It's okay to ask a question and not apologize for asking the question." And I thought that made a lot of sense. The other thing I think that's really important is that there are many things that I've done in my life that were not like, "Oh gosh, I really want to do this. This is so great," but I did it because I believed in it, and and it and I wanted something back to someone else. I mean, a great example, you know, when my, my grandma was real sick and um, she came to live with us and there were days that were so hard, you know, where I didn't have nursing care and I took care of all of her personal needs. And I, I can say I didn't want to be in that place, but I did it because I loved her and I wanted to do it. So I think women have to sort of remember there are times in life where you make the choice that you do the activity and the action because there's a purpose to it. There's a meaning because you love someone. And then that time, this too shall pass. Those times don't last, but you do it for the purpose of loving and caring and helping another person. And to me, that, that's never wrong. That can never be wrong. You may sacrifice something for that day, but the goal was to help another human being, to help somebody you loved. And so I say, you know, you make time for the things you believe in and Life is impermanent. Things don't stay. So those things, you may not, that thing that you believed in may no longer be there at some point. So do it while you can do it and do it with all of your heart. And I think that's, for me, that's where joy and purpose and meaning of life lives. 
You know, Sandra, yes, and you also talked to me about the importance of getting away. Now, it's hard in the world in which we're living, and if we're career women, women and we have children at home, it's also equally hard. You gave an exercise, or you talked about an exercise with me, um, to kind of help women ex explore their purpose, our purpose. And I loved the exercise relating to looking back in your life for repetition. I think that's really important. Would you, would you share that with the audience? So I think one of the ways to find your purpose and to um, really hone in on what matters in your life is to take a look at your life and sit down and write your story or tell your story to someone. And as you do that, you'll begin to see themes, ideas, passions, uh, that patterns that are inherent throughout your life. Early on, you asked me to tell you my story. I came to understand my purpose by telling my story. You know, I um, had to tell my story for, for a work event many years ago. Um, as an artist and an author, I was asked to speak to a group of people and they wanted to know how I started writing and I started reflecting on that. And my story began to unfold to myself. And as I told my story, I began to understand that I was always looking for a way to communicate, that love really mattered and the power of love had always astounded me. You know, since the time I was a little girl, um, that being a twin really mattered because relationships and being closely connected to people mattered. So those themes and patterns begin to emerge as you tell yourself and others the story of your life. And if you think about it, we often go in and out of each other's lives. And, and most people are only getting a little snippet of your life. But when you begin to tell your life as a story, your story emerges with themes and meaning. And I think each one of us would benefit a lot to do that because within that purpose, meaning, passion arises. And, and those are the things that we're looking for. That's so super good. And I also loved it when you said, when you're telling your story or when you get an idea, you said to me, Sandra, grab it <laughs> right then and there. Oh my yes. goodness, how often we have thoughts that are really important and then we didn't write, I'll speak for myself, I didn't write it down, then I lost yeah. it, or it wasn't yeah. quite the same. And so yes. you're so artistic and creative. I will never forget the visual, and that's what you gave to me. We remember visuals, don't we? And you said, you reach up and grab that idea. And yeah. so what would you say, speaking of love and finding your purpose and your your, uh, your joy in life. We're in a very contentious time, right, Sandra? Where there's just so much divisiveness. And we talk love is important and love. That sounds good. It sounds true. And it's also very difficult to have that love connection in the divisive world in which we live. Mm -hmm. What are one or two ways you personally make that connection with someone that you know is hitting you from a, a different perspective, whatever that is? Mm -hmm. I think that is the question of the time. We are such a divided nation. We are, you know, the world is divided in, in ways that I think is unprecedented. I really have found. I draw a lot of um, a lot of knowledge. I draw a lot of faith. I draw a lot of comfort from nature, and I look for what I call the space in between. So before you know, morning becomes night. You know, I I look for that quiet space there um, in the tides. Before when a tide comes in and a tide comes out, there's a space that's called intertidal. It's where everything is still. Um, you know, it's the space before the raindrop. It's the space in between the snowflake. It's space. There's space in between love and fear and hate and misunderstanding. There's a space that's where peace lives. And I really have been drawing on that space. 
And I think it's found in meditation. I think it's found in prayer. It's found relaxing in a bathtub. Um, it's found in taking deep breaths. And I, I've really come to believe that I believe this with all my heart. I believe that people really are good at heart. I think people are fearful. And I think I want to give people the opportunity to, to put aside their fear and be able to have a conversation with me where fear and defensiveness can be left alone, can be set on the side because we're in a place that's in between where I'm not drilling down my idea and I don't want them to have to defend theirs. We can come together as human beings. Sandra, those of us women who are in business, many of us entrepreneurs, um, have had to be persistent. We've had to stick to it, that, that stickiness. And that's not easy sometimes. Talk to us about that. Well, I, I think persistence is one of uh, uh, is a superpower that entrepreneurs need to to hold on to and adopt. I mean, all too often, people will write me or call me and ask for advice on a business, and I'll say, "Well, show me what you're talking about. Show me what you, what the idea is." Well, I haven't done it yet. It is an idea. So, number one, I'd like to say, to folks, make your idea, M mock it up, glue it up. Do whatever you can to create what it is that's in your mind and in your heart. And then secondly, when you put it out in the world, if it doesn't, if you get a no, if you, if you, if it doesn't go right the first time, don't let that stop you. Persistence really matters. You know, not everything is, is fast. Not everything is automatic. Some things take time and they need to be revised and worked through. Um, and th their time wasn't yet, but their time is to come. I can tell you that Welcome Little One, the book that we talked about earlier, when it first came into being, we did it in a format that was a large picture book. And it, with lots of things that had like a, a, a lullaby in it, you could click and other kinds of um, bells and whistles. That book didn't sell well. Five years after its initial publication, it was reformatted to a board book with baby animals all the way through it. Same story, same poem that I wrote, but reformatted, and it will reach a million books sold this year. So persistence, you know, like the little engine who could, you know, you have to keep going back. I have ideas that I had submitted to publishers three, four, five years ago that weren't right at that time, but I believed in them. And I kept coming back, kept sharing, kept reworking them, kept making them better, collaborating with folks. And then they come to life when they're meant to be. So be persistent. If you believe in it, believe in it and follow it through. Well, I totally agree with you. I actually had someone say to me one time, Sandra, why do you smile so much? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had I had the wherewithal, I would have said, <laughs> I actually did say, well, you get more wrinkles when you frown. <laughs> right. And here's one of my favorite little messages. I, like I have all these messages. I, I listen to everything people say. And I heard somebody say once that a smile is a little curve that straightens everything out. <laughs> That's a good one. Isn't it good? Yeah. <laughs> Give me one word that is your brand. One word, your brand. I think it's love. Okay. Sandra, you've got how many books that you're working on now? Uh, um, a bunch. <laughs> a bunch. Um, Are there some coming out? We're developing a whole new line of books for kids that are very interactive, um, that are about playing and um, playing with other people. So books become more of a communal experience than just a one, you know, sharing with yourself. It, it, we're opening it up, you know, really to be a play format with um, play experiences. And then I'm also working on books for schools and for home learners that are about um, more social emotional learning, learning about our feelings, learning about relationships, in addition to ABCs and one, two, threes. So that's been really fun and really exciting. And um, yeah, and we're in some other projects with um, ABC books we're doing that um, are regionally based. So they're ABCs of all different states in the country. 
And um, that's been really fun to learn about different states and to share them in a fun way with kids. So I always got a lot of projects happening and I, you know, I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Really thinking through, I'm a problem solver, I think, you know, in many ways, and I love a good puzzle. So I'm, in, in these times, the problems are, to me, pretty clear. So it's pretty easy for me to pick a problem and then begin looking for solutions. So that's really what I'm doing now is trying to, um, you know, parents need a lot of support. Family needs, families need support. They need uh, tools to help them teach their children during um, the time where schools are, are, are not in session because of the, the, the pandemic and things that are going on. So I'm developing ideas and books to get in the hands of families that will help families. Uh, so um, those sorts of things, you know, I'm always looking to develop new formats um, that can, you know, help people in terms of getting books in their hands and sending them. I'm working on doing some books that are, are, are really mailable that would, would be, be sent through the mail in a very specific folding format. Um, I like being a little inventor, you know, like kind of figuring out new ways to, to do old things, but with important messages. You are just incredibly creative. I wish I had just maybe a fingernail of all the things that you can do. One more I believe question. you do. Look what you do. I mean, I think we underestimate ourselves. I mean, I, that's the whole living artfully thing. We are all artists. We're all creative. You can't really get out of bed without being creative. You choose what you put on, what kind of shoes, what color of your lipstick, you know, what you're going to wear, who you're going to talk to. All of those are creative decisions. And how you do them is showing the artist in you. We've just so narrowly defined the word artist. Um, I think we all are artists. And everything we do is, is an act of art in our life. What you cook for dinner, you know, how you set the table, how you arrange your flowers, everything is a work of art. Sandra, I would never have really put context around that. I would never have thought of when I put my makeup on or when I choose what to wear or when I cook my meal. You are so right. That's really raising some good awareness for us women to recognize we really are creative human beings. Everyone is. But we think about creativity as someone with the talents and gifts that you have or, or uh, we're working with an architectural firm now and those artists we think that's that's how i typically think of artists but you've given us a whole different mindset on that so thank you for that thank you for being on the, the show today you, narrow. i think that's just too narrow of a definition and it doesn't do justice to every act that we do all day from the songs we sing with our children you don't have to be lady gaga or you know madonna to be a musician, you can sing to your child every day. You know, you, you, an artist, you know, can, how you decorate a birthday cake, you know, how you arrange hors d'oeuvres, you know, uh, for a dinner party, you know, uh, the, the path you drive on the way to the mall with your child can be a creative adventure. I mean, all these small acts of living are artistic acts. You know, that, that leads me, I think, Sandra, to, for myself, I'm going to put a little sticky note on my computer just to remind me, be intentional in looking for, your, for my creativity. Yeah. Because I'd really, yeah. honestly, until we met and had such a good conversation about what creativity really is, and we've all got it in it, I hadn't really given it the honor that I should have. And boy, am I honored that you were on the show today. No, thank you. Sandra, we're going to be looking for your new products and blankets and children's books and fluffy things, all the things that you do. And one more thought. I also will tell you that through the years I bought your plaques, the little cute plaques that have the little messages. Almost every home has your plaques in it. So if you audience want to know how to get in touch with Sandra and I'll bet you will you need to go to write to Sandra isn't that easy write to Sandra at comcast.net thank you for being on the show and have a wonderful rest of the year Thanks for listening. To receive Valerie's voice, free monthly leadership tips, and to learn more about her leadership programs and coaching, visit her website, valerieandcompany.com. Next week, we'll be here again. 
to inspire, engage, and equip you with teachable points of view from successful leaders who have been doing it right. Until then, lead authentically.